In one of my recent videos where I shared a tour of my Home Assistant dashboard, I talked about how I have all of my HomeKit devices integrated into HomeKit through Home Assistant. As a refresher, I do that because it gives me such deep automation capabilities through Home Assistant. Well, many of you reached out and asked for a full tutorial on how I get those devices into HomeKit through Home Assistant, so that's what we're gonna do today. Now today I will not be talking about how to get devices set up in HomeKit, nor will I talk about how to get Home Assistant set up. This is assuming you already have Home Assistant set up and you already have a HomeKit Home. This is simply getting HomeKit enabled devices into Home Assistant and back into HomeKit so that I have that deep automation capability in Home Assistant. Now, as you know by now, one of my favorite smart home companies is Acara. And today we're gonna to be setting up my M2 hub here in my studio to go into Home Assistant so that I can get it into HomeKit so I can have all of the sensors and devices that are already on that hub available in Home Assistant as well as HomeKit. Now please understand, Home Assistant can be an absolute beast and this can be quite an intimidating process. If you have a ton of HomeKit devices that you wanna get into Home Assistant, just know that it does require you to remove those devices from HomeKit, in turn removing any automations you have set up, but it might be worth it because in my experience, Home Assistant has actually been a lot more reliable for automations, allowing them to run faster, smoother, and as I've said a couple times already, on a much deeper level. So with that, proceed at your own risk and let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start off in the Apple Home uh, ecosystem and I'm just gonna go up here to my home settings and I'm gonna find the hub. Like I said, I have an a Cara Hub M2 that is set up here in my studio, and that has five devices already added to it. Um, and I'm going to do something that is counterintuitive, and I'm gonna remove that. However, before I go in here and click remove, you will need the pairing code from that device. So make sure you take note of that pairing code. Now I use an app called HomePass uh, to keep all of my pairing codes for my devices logged here and it looks like this and you can see I have the setup code right there in the app and what that's going to allow me to do is go ahead and tap on that setup code and copy it and then when I go into Home Assistant to add my device into Home Assistant I have that pairing code already copied so let's go ahead and click remove bridge from home like I said this is removing every device every automation tied to those devices. So, and now we're quickly gonna go ahead and jump over to Home Assistant and in settings and integrations, we should see a new uh, bridge here, a Cara Hub M2. We're gonna hit configure and that's where that pairing code is gonna come in handy. So we're gonna copy that and paste it right here. And that is going to start pairing. So it is that simple. Um, once you remove that device from HomeKit, it basically is gonna put that device into pairing, code, in, into pairing mode. And that works for most, not all, most uh, HomeKit enabled devices if it's not already available for Home Assistant. So I don't know where all of these are. I know this is in my studio. I know this is my studio door. I think this one's in the living room. And I know this is in the downstairs bathroom. I don't know where this is. I'm just gonna put it in my studio for now. That just helps later on for when we're creating automations. We can create automations for specific areas and stuff like that. So I like to keep everything as organized as I can. And that's it. Now we have that. Uh, now if we scroll down, we have those devices here in HomeKit via the HomeKit device integration which is what that automatically creates whenever you have those pulled in. So you can see here my Acara Hub M2, uh, and it's got five devices, and it's those five that we just put in here. So now that we have that, we now want to get those devices back into HomeKit so that we can use them in HomeKit like we would like to natively. So. What we're gonna do to do that is we're gonna go back to our devices and services and we're gonna search or add a new integration. We're gonna search for Apple and we're gonna go get the HomeKit bridge integration. 
Now, the HomeKit bridge integration is how we're going to bridge the gap from Home Assistant to Apple Home. So when you open this, read this, but essentially it's telling you that it wants you to select the device types that you want to bring over into Apple Home from Home Assistant. Now this integration is not only bringing over the ones that we just enter integrated into Home Assistant, this is actually gonna bring anything we have in Home Assistant. So anything we have now or anything that we will add later, this is the device type. So you have automations. If you create an automation in Home Assistant, you can bring those over into HomeKit. Binary sensors, that's things like your presence sensors or your motion sensors um, or virtual switches even. Um, buttons, cameras, climate, let's go ahead and check buttons. Um, you can do any of these um, different types of devices and have them bridged over into HomeKit. So we're gonna leave it there. I'm gonna hit submit. Now you see to complete the pairing, follow the instructions in notifications under HomeKit pairing. I'm gonna show you what that means in just a second. So first we're gonna hit submit and we want this to live in my studio and finish. And now we have a HomeKit bridge set up. Before we actually add that bridge to our Apple Home though, we want to actually do a little more configuration because it's going to have some devices in there I don't particularly want to be in there right now. So we're going to go back to our integrations and we're going to find HomeKit bridge and we're going to click configure next to that bridge. And you see it looks a little bit different this time. So we have HomeKit mode, bridge or accessory. So if I were to click accessory, it would actually pull in all those individual accessories. We want it to be a bridge because we want it to bridge all those accessories over. And you have exclude or include. Um, inclusion mode, it's up to you. Basically, if you choose exclude, whatever you check is going to exclude those. Whatever you check, if you choose include, it's going to include those. I leave it as exclude, but that, that does not affect this group right here. This clearly says domains to include. These are the same things that we checked earlier. So we're going to hit submit. And now you see select ent entities to be excluded. Entities is just individual properties of devices. And I'll explain what that means more in a minute. If we click entities right here, I can go through and select all the ones I do not want in my home. It's a little easier for me to think about what I don't want versus what I do want. Um, for example, I have the Akari M1S security system. I do want that in my home. Uh, Akari M2 security system. I don't need two different Akari devices exposing security systems, so I'm going to exclude that one. Akari M1S light bulb. I do want that. Elgato. I do want that. Light bulb. I don't know what that is, but I do want it because I want to find out. I don't want my Google Home Hub Mini. So I'll just go through and uncheck the different devices that I do not want in my Apple home. And there we go, so submit. So I don't have a ton of devices in here right now because it's a test home assistant, but um, I wanted to just show what this looks like. So success, we're finished. And now we're ready to add this to our Apple home. So in order to do that, we're actually gonna pick up our iPhone and we're gonna go to add accessory. And I'm gonna go over to here, I'm gonna go over here to notifications, and I'm gonna see a HomeKit pairing code right there in my notifications, ready to be scanned. Let's see if this works. So if I scan it, it'll say bridge, uncertified. We're gonna add it anyway. We know it's uncertified because we're adding it through a completely different third-party app. So let's go ahead and add it anyway. And we're gonna put that in our studio. And we'll rename it, I'm gonna call it Home Assistant Bridge. Continue. And now it's gonna tell us, and now it's gonna have us place these devices. So the Acara Hub M1LS light bulb. I know that's in my, you know what, we're gonna put that as entrance because I'm gonna set that as a, a part of the alarm system. We'll leave it as that name. Don't. Now our Elgato light, I know that's this key light air, so I know that's in my studio. And we're gonna rename that key light air. No automations. 
I don't know what this light bulb is, so I'm actually gonna put it in a room that I created called Home Assistant for devices I don't actually know what they are and I wanna identify them later. So we're just gonna call it light bulb and leave it alone. And now we have three lights. So it's basically gonna have me go through all of my devices that I just brought in that are in my Home Assistant instance that I want to be in here. So I'm just gonna go place these and I'll probably put most of them in the Home Assistant app or Home Assistant room so I can identify them later. And that's it. Now we have all of those devices in Apple Home through Home Assistant. So if I go over here to my settings and my devices and services, you can see HomeKit device, devices. I actually have my Hub M1S in here, my Hub M2 that I just added in, and all of the devices connected to those two hubs. I actually have one more hub upstairs that I'm gonna add later, and then that'll get all the Acara devices in here. Um, let's go ahead and go back though, and let's add a different device in here. So I have my key light right here plugged into a Maris smart plug that works with HomeKit. And it's got a HomeKit pairing code on top, so I know it works with HomeKit. I have this key light plugged into one of these that I wanna add into HomeKit through Home Assistant so that I can control it in Home Assistant, I can automate it in Home Assistant, but I can also have it in my Apple Home so I can just use Siri and tap, and tap it and do all that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back through that process. I'm actually gonna go in here to my key light and I'm just gonna remove the device. I'm not gonna remove the bridge or the hub. I'm just gonna remove the accessory. So I found my key light. I'm just gonna remove accessory. Oh, but first I'm gonna go to my home pass and I'm gonna find my video key light, and I'm going to copy that code. Now I'm gonna remove the accessory, and we should see it pop up here. There it is, MSS110s. They name these things so strangely. But there it is, the MSS110 CBD outlet. We're gonna configure that, and we're just gonna paste that pairing code that we just copied over and done now we have it in here so we're going to go to put that in our studio finish um, and then if i wanted to get real picky i could go in here to find that and i can go up here and click it click this edit button up top and then rename it we're going to call that uh video key light make sure it's in my studio update and there we go now, I could also click into here and click into settings and change how it's shown. I like for lights, even if they're plugs or light switches, I like for them to be shown as lights so that I know that when I say turn the lights off, it'll turn the lights off. And whatever I do right now in Home Assistant should carry over to HomeKit whenever I transfer it over. And I like this to be a light panel. You can change the icon. This is really handy in Home Assistant so you can uh, identify things pretty quickly. And I like the entity ID to match. Video key light update. Okay. And now it's in Home Assistant. If I turn this off, my key light turns off, back on. And then I can, of course, group the two lights if I wanted to, which I probably will at some point. But for now, what I wanna do is I wanna go back out to my settings, devices and services, HomeKit bridge, configure. I already know it's included in the do domains to include because it's a light or it's an outlet, which is also included in that. But now I can go into my entities and I'm because I'm excluding that might be confusing if you wanted to change that to include all you would want to do is select include right here and then whatever you check will be included for me it makes more sense to choose what i don't want included but i want to make sure that this is unchecked right here video key light outlet is unselected submit finish and then just to be safe i'm going to go up here i'm going to reload this integration and then 
that should show up over here. If I go to my home hubs and bridges, I can find my home assistant bridge, find my accessories, and there it is, video key light right there. It is incorporated and you see it's a light, it's not a plug or an outlet, and it's already in the studio and we are all set to go. Now I can group these if I wanted to here in uh, Apple Home. Um, I can do whatever I wanted to do in Apple Home as normal, but then I could also go back over into Home Assistant and I can create the most in-depth automations. I can make this turn on and off at certain, if I'm entering a zone, I can do all kinds of stuff with this. And so, as you can see, you can do a lot with just adding these devices into Home Assistant so that you have the op opportunity to create super in-depth automations and you have the opportunity to create the, the floor plans like I was showing you in the last video, which by the way, I do plan to do a video about how I built those floor plans. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed, stay tuned. It's a pretty hefty job, so it's gonna take a little bit for me to put that together, but subscribe so you don't miss that. And uh, like I said, thank you so much for checking this video out. Uh, I hope it was helpful and I hope it helps you make a decision on whether you want to go with Home Assistant or not. And uh, hopefully it helps you in your journey if you decide to. So as always, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.